This is a Puritan and Reformed audiobook podcast. I found a book on the Post-Reformation Digital Library from a reformer I am not really familiar with, but it caught my eye that he has a book at great length called Prayers and Other Pieces of Thomas Bacon. So I want to read a few of the sample prayers in here. Starting with this title, The Confession of Our Sins to God the Father. I am not able to express, O wretched sinner that I am, how grievously the burden of my sins oppress me. Wherever I turn, whatever I do, speak or think, I perceive such corruption and wickedness, such abomination and uncleanness to reign in me, that it utterly confounds my conscience and in a manner fetters me with the chain of desperation. No marvel, for my outward man is flesh, earth, ashes, dust, dung, and all that most vile is. My thought and disposition is altogether nothing. Even from my very cradle my heart is unclean, defiled with most filthy sin, lewd, and unable to be searched for the manifold wickedness of it, but of God alone. My works are abominable and loathsome in the sight of the Most High. Yea, my very righteousness is, if any I have, or even as a defiled cloth. Again, my inward man has lost its former beauty. Instead of the image of God, he is miserably deformed with the wicked visor of wily Satan. In a place of innocency, faith, love, hope, patience, mercy, obedience, goodness, gentleness, liberality, joy, and such other fruits of the Holy Ghost, wickedness, unfaithfulness, hatred, desperation, vengeance, covetousness, rebellion, maliciousness, churlishness, unmercifulness, pensiveness of mind, and such other damnable works of the flesh are entered into me, and wholly possess me, so that where I consider my outward or inward man, I find myself the bond slave of Satan, the vile dunghill of sin, the miserable debtor of the law, the firebrand of hell, the child of wrath, the vessel of vengeance, the son of perdition, the wandering sheep, the wounded man, an hypocrite, an unprofitable servant, inheritor of everlasting pain and all that ever not is. To rid myself of all these most detestable enormities, I am not able. To seek remedy at any other man's hand, to buy their merits, prayers, watchings, fastings, and their other works, oh, it is but vain. Moses cannot heal my disease, Neither the Levite nor the priest can bind up my wounds and make them whole. For vain is the health that is looked for at man's hand. All have sinned, all have gone astray. All owe to that heavenly king ten thousand talents. All are become abominable. There is not one that doeth good, no, not one. Ah, then who can be made clean of them that are unclean? Ah, who being sick will seek to be made whole of them that are altogether diseased? Ah, who being weak will wish to be stayed up by him which for feebleness is not able to stand? Can the Ethiopian change his skin, or the leopard her spots? No more can they make me good which are themselves not. Ah, whither then shall I flee unto myself and unto mine own righteousness? I am a most damnable sinner, and of myself not able to think a good thought. Unto the law it wounds, kills, and condemns me. It is the yoke that neither we nor our fathers were ever able to bear. Unto creatures, they have not oil enough for themselves. A wretch that I am, destitute and void of all mortal help, shall I despair? Far be that from me. But were there not another manner of doctrine than the doctrine of the law which makes no man perfect? Were there not another manner of righteousness than is found in myself or in any other sinful creature? I see none other but plain desperation, death, and damnation. But thanks be unto thee, O heavenly Father, which tendered the health of your creatures, although sinful, so oft as they repent, believe, and study to amend their life, has set forth in your holy scriptures another doctrine, even the doctrine of the gospel, 
that most sweet, pleasant, and joyful tidings of our salvation, which comforts, cheers, and makes merry weak consciences and sorrowful hearts, and another righteousness, even the righteousness of thy well-beloved Son, Jesus Christ, for whose sake thou art well pleased with man, and for whose innocency and righteousness you freely of your bountiful goodness forgive the sin of so many as with hard repentance fly unto you for mercy. I therefore, O most merciful Father, stay in and comforting my weak conscience with the sweet promises that I find in the Holy Gospel of your dearly beloved Son, made unto all that be faithfully penitent without respect of persons in the precious blood of your aforesaid Son, Jesus Christ, and bold notwithstanding the multitude of my sins at this present, to come unto the throne of your mercy most humbly, beseeching you not to weigh my deserts, nor to deal with me according to my merits. For if you would narrowly mark our iniquities, O Lord, who shall abide it, which deserve nothing but wrath and damnation? But for the innocency and righteousness of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, whom you have given me to be mine own, and with him all his merits and good deeds to be through faith so surely mine, as though I myself had done and wrought them, to forgive me my sins according to your promise, to renew your fatherly love towards me, to receive me into your favor, to make me a vessel of mercy, to number me in the company of your chosen people, and to endue me with your blessed spirit, which may mortify my carnal effects, slay old Adam in me, work new in those spiritual and heavenly motions in my heart, and with his holy breath make me a new and perfect man according to thy blessed image. O most loving Father, weigh not my sins, but remember the most gentle promises. Consider not my evil works, but have respect to the undefiled deeds of your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you have given to be my Redeemer, my Savior, my Righteousness, my Atonement Maker, my Satisfaction, and the alone and all holy sufficient sacrifice for all my sins, for his sake, for his innocency and righteousness, have mercy, O God, on me according to your great mercy, and put away all my unrighteousnesses for your tender compassion. I have gone astray like a sheep that was lost, yet, O Lord, for your mercy's sake, seek me up, lay me upon your shoulders, and bring me home again to your sheepfold. I have been a lost son. I have spent away my goods with the wicked, yet for thy goodness sake, O Father, receive me and take me home again, if not as your son, yet as one of your servants. I am grievously wounded and can be helped neither by priest nor Levite. Yet cast me not away, good Lord, for your tender mercy's sake, but pour wine and oil into my wounds. Bind them up and never leave me till you have made me perfectly whole. So shall I after this be the more circumspect in training my life according to thy blessed will, and evermore sing continual praises to thy most blessed name through Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all glory and honor, worlds without end. Amen. A Confession of Our Sins Unto the Lord Jesus Christ The tyranny of Satan, mine old enemy, which ceases not daily to assail me with his subtle temptations, and to wound me with his cruel darts, compels me at this present, O blessed Redeemer, and mine alone Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of the true and living God, to flee for succor, under the pitiful bowels of thy tender mercy, lest I be forever swallowed up as a prey of that dreadful dragon. O Lord, I am feeble and weak, but Satan is strong and mighty, the prince of darkness and god of this world, having at his command an infinite multitude both of wicked spirits and of ungodly men, which both daily and diligently travel to satisfy his cruel tyranny, and work my destruction, whom to resist I am not able. Notwithstanding, Lord, thou art more valiant than he, stronger than all his army, more able to save than he to condemn. Yea, he is your bond slave. You rule him at your good pleasure. He can rage against your elect no further than your most godly will allows him. Thou therefore, O Lord my God, are able to deliver me from his ravening teeth and to keep me safe from his bloodthirsty ministers. For you are the blessed seed of the woman that treads down the head, destroys the power of that old serpent. 
You are that Lord which has swallowed up hell. You are the King of glory which by your death destroyed him that had the power of death, that is the devil. You are that Michael which has fought with the dragon and overcome him. Yea, you are that Lion of the tribe of Judah which has vanquished all our enemies. Moreover, not only Satan and his angels, but also the world and the flesh most grievously assail me. Yea, and lead me away captive as their prey. The world with its vain pleasures, deceitful riches, and transitory possessions so blinds the eyes of my heart that I cannot love thee, O most sweet Savior, with such pureness of mind as I ought. Notwithstanding, this comforts me well that you have overcome the world, and that whensoever it pleases you to endue me with your Holy Spirit, I may through your grace subdue the world and make it a bond slave to me, which now so mightily reigns, rules, and triumphs over me. The flesh also with her subtle enticements, so worldly, occupies me that I am altogether flesh, and all that not is, and by this means holy without thy Holy Spirit. Yet have you by the pureness of your blessed flesh, which you have unfeignedly taken of the undefiled maid Mary, your mother, by the wonderful operation of the Holy Ghost, so slain the raging lust of our sinful flesh, that whensoever we lament our cause to thee, confessing our misery and weakness, you are both able and also will, through your Holy Spirit, quench those raging lusts, mortify those carnal effects, that so inordinately boil in our inward members and make us truly spiritual. Thus you see, O most merciful Redeemer, with how great a multitude of enemies I am besieged and set round about, which without ceasing seek my destruction, and have already most tyrantly spoiled me of my garments, and most grievously wounded me, leaving me half dead. So without thy help I must needs perish. Help therefore, O most sweet Savior, and deliver me from these mine enemies. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. Ah, good Jesus, my sins are great and infinite, I confess, but your merits are much greater and more infinite. My wounds are many and grievous, but you are that most loving Samaritan, full of pity and compassion which by pouring wine and oil into my wounds are sufficiently able to heal them, although they were ten thousand more. I am a sinner, but thou art a savior. I am sick, but thou art a physician. I am blind, but thou art the light of the world. I am Satan's prisoner, but thou art a redeemer. I am dead in sin, but thou art the resurrection and life. I am hungry, but thou art the living bread. I am thirsty, but thou art the well of life. I am poor, but thou art the Lord of all wealth. I am a barren tree, but thou art that true and fruitful vine. I am the lost sheep, but thou art that good shepherd. I am that prodigal son, but you are that gentle father. I am by nature the child of wrath, but thou art by nature the son of the living God. I am by nature a sinful man, but you are by nature man righteous and innocent. I am a daily offender, but you are a continual mediator. I am a breaker of thy law, but you are a fulfiller of it. I have lost heavenly inheritance through sin, but you have recovered it by your death. I have wrought mine own destruction, but you by your precious blood has brought me salvation. Thus, albeit, O most merciful Savior, I find in myself nothing but sin, death, and damnation. Yet in thee find I grace, mercy, favor, reconciliation, forgiveness of sin, and everlasting life. Take away, therefore, that is mine, which is all not, and give me that is thine, which is all good. Thou art called Christ, anoint me, therefore, with your Holy Spirit. Thou art called a physician, according, therefore, to thy name, heal me. Thou art called the Son of the living God, according therefore to thy power deliver me from the devil, the world, and the flesh. Thou art called the resurrection, lift me up therefore from the damnable state in which I most miserably lie. You are called to life, quicken me up therefore out of this death in which 
Through sin I am most grievously detained. You are called away. Lead me therefore from the vanities of this world and from the filthy pleasures of the flesh to heavenly and spiritual things. You are called the truth. Allow me not therefore to walk in the way of error, but to tread the path of truth in all my doings. You are the light. Put away therefore from me the works of darkness, that I may walk as a child of light in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. You are called a Savior. Save me therefore from my sins according to thy name. You are called Alpha and Omega. That is both the beginning and end of all goodness. Begin thou therefore a good life in me and finish the same to the glory of your blessed name. So shall I receive these benefits at your merciful hand. Praise you and magnify your blessed name forever. Amen. The following is a prayer that we may have the fear of God before our eyes and all our doings. O Almighty and everlasting God, your holy word teaches us that you are not only a Father but also a Lord, not only a forgiver but also a revenger, not only a Savior but also a judge. And as you being a Father, a forgiver, a Savior, pardons and shows mercy, so you being a Lord, a revenger, a judge, punish and condemn. Neither does your Holy Scripture only set forth unto us a gospel which comforts us, quickens us, shows us merry tidings, forgives our sins, quiets our conscience, and brings unto us everlasting life, but also a law which reproves, accuses, condemns us, wounds and slays our conscience, yea, and throws us down headlong into the deep dungeon of hell. And as the gospel lifts us up and makes us merry with the hope of remission and forgiveness of our sins, so does the law pluck us down and almost drive us to desperation for fear of the plagues and everlasting punishments which you have prepared for them that despise your holy ordinances, so that we may not only love you as a father, a forgiver, a savior, but also fear thee as a lord, a revenger, a judge. For as much, therefore, O most gentle Savior and most righteous Judge, as nothing does so mightily put away sin, and makes us to walk in the way of thy commandments, as reverently to fear thee, to stand in awe of your judgment and heavy displeasure, we most entirely pray you to give us that fear which you require of us in your holy scriptures, and whereunto you have promised so many large and bounteous benefits, that we may not only love you as a Savior, honor you as a Father, but also reverence you as a Lord, fear thee as a judge. O Lord, all things are open unto your eyes, neither is anything hid from you which you see, the very secrets and most inward thoughts of our hearts. Give us therefore grace that in all our enterprises we ever set your fear before our eyes, and stand in awe of you and of your righteous judgments, that we attempt nothing in which we should provoke your heavy displeasure against us, but so walk in your fear and in your holy ordinances that we may at all times love you as a Savior, honor you as a Father, reverence you as a Lord, fear you as a Judge. So shall it come to pass that we, reverently fearing you as a child does his Father, shall not only avoid all such evils as might make you our heavy Lord and fierce Judge, but also embrace those virtues which shall both evidently declare our faithful love, true honor, unfeigned reverence, and humble fear towards you, and also make you our loving Father and most merciful Savior. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The next prayer is called a prayer for faith. We are taught by the Holy Apostle, O Most Loving Savior, that whatsoever is not of faith is sin and that it is impossible to please thee without faith, and therefore they that come unto thee must believe that thou art God, yea, and such a God as is both able and also will abundantly reward all them that with true faith seek you. For your eyes, O Lord, look upon faith, and you appear and show yourself to them that have faith in you. Yea, through faith, you being the King of glory, are married to the souls of the faithful, and make them partakers of your divine nature, through the wonderful working of your blessed Spirit. Through faith, so many as believe are justified, made the sons and heirs of God, and have everlasting life. By faith we obtain of God all good things, even whatsoever we ask in your name. Seeing that faith is so precious a jewel in your sight, that without it nothing is acceptable to your divine majesty, 
and we of our own nature cannot have this most singular treasure except you give it to us from above and breathe it into our hearts by your Holy Spirit. For we of ourselves are blind, ignorant, foolish, and by no means can perceive the things that pertain to the Spirit of God. We most heartily beseech thee to take away from us all infidelity and unfaithfulness, which we received of old Adam, and to plant in us true faith and undoubted belief that we may be thoroughly persuaded that you are the Son of the living God, a very God and very man, our alone sweet-smelling sacrifice, our alone mediator, advocate, and intercessor, our alone wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, by whom alone and for whose sake only your Heavenly Father is well pleased with us. Our sins are remitted, grace and everlasting life are freely given unto us. O Lord God, allow us not to lean to our own wisdom, nor to believe as blind flesh fancies, nor to seek salvation where superstition dreams. But let our faith only be grounded on your word and give us grace truly to believe in you with all our heart, to put our trust in you, to look for all good things of you, to call upon your blessed name in adversity, and with joyful voices and more merry hearts to praise and magnify it in prosperity. Allow us not to doubt neither of God, your Heavenly Father, nor of you, God, His Son, nor of God, the Holy Ghost, but earnestly to believe that you, being three distinct persons in the Deity, are notwithstanding one very God, besides whom there is no God, neither in heaven nor in earth. Grant also that we may assuredly believe whatsoever is contained in the Holy Scriptures, and by no means allow ourselves to be plucked from the verity of it, but mainly and steadfastly abide in the same even unto death, rage, world, roaring devils. And this faith, O sweet Jesus, increase daily in us more and more, that at the last, through thy goodness, we may be made perfect and strong in your holy religion, and show ourselves both before you and the world truly faithful, by bringing forth plenty of good works to the glory and honor of your name, which, with God the Father and God the Holy Ghost, lives and reigns, true God, worlds without end. Amen. The following prayer is called a prayer for a godly life. It greatly grieves us, O merciful Father and everlasting God, that we, through the grievous and continual assaults of our enemies, are not able to pass over our years in this world with such purity of life as we ought, and as you require of us. Verily, we are on every part so besieged and compass round about, of our adversaries, that scarcely at any time we can be free from their pestiferous and deadly darts, nor yet have so much respite as once to breathe toward true godliness. O oh, most loving Lord, you are our Father, and we are your children. Convenient, therefore, is it that we, your children, represent and openly declare in our conversation the manners of you, our Father. You are good, gentle, loving, charitable, merciful, patient, long-suffering, holy, righteous, faithful, and so on. If therefore becomes us your children in our living to practice goodness, gentleness, love, charity, mercy, patience, long-suffering, holiness, righteousness, faith, and so on, you have given us an example that even as you have done so, we likewise should do. If we say we dwell in you, we ought to walk as you have walked, for thou hast called us not to uncleanness, but unto holiness. You have delivered us from the power of our enemies, that we, being without fear, should serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. The blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, has cleansed us from all sin, not that we should continue in darkness, but rather walk in the light as you are in the light. The loving kindness has appeared to all men, not that we should follow ungodliness and worldly lusts, but that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. You did choose us in Christ before the foundations of the world were laid, that we should be holy and without blame before thee through him. We are your workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which you ordained afore that we should walk in them. For as much then as all the benefits which you have bestowed upon us are given to us to this end, that we should walk worthy of your kindness, represent your manners in our conversation, mortify the flesh and the lust thereof, 
have nothing to do with Satan or the world, but lead a good life, garnished full of good works, and in all points fashioned after the rule of your blessed word, we most heartily pray thee to endue us with your Holy Spirit, which may take away our stony heart and give us a new fleshly and soft heart. Kill that old man in us which is corrupt through deceivable lusts, and fashion in us that new man which is made after your image and likeness and righteousness and true holiness. Allow us not to give over ourselves again unto our old lusts and concupiscences in which we were led when we knew not thee nor your Son, Jesus Christ. But even as you have called us art holy, so likewise grant that we may be holy in all our conversation. O oh, merciful God, not the hearers of the law, but the fulfillers of it shall be justified before thee. Neither shall every one that saith unto thee, Lord, Lord, enter into the kingdom of heaven, but they that do the will of thee, our Father, which art in heaven, to confess you with our mouth, and to deny you with our deeds, works rather our damnation than salvation. For the true knowledge of you consists not in talking, but in walking, not in favoring, but in following, not in loving, but in living, to promise you by mouth that we will work in your vineyard, and yet work nothing at all, declare not us to be your sons, but rather bastards, to brag of the justification of faith, and not to bring forth the fruits of it, to glory in the merits of your Son Christ, and his blood, death, and passion, and not to live worthy of his kindness, to profess your holy gospel, and not to walk according to the doctrine of it, to be baptized in your name, and not to mortify our members which are of the earth, nor to walk in a new life, to be partakers of your divine mysteries, and not to be made one spirit with you. What does it avail? We are your friends if we do those things that you command us. We are your servants if we be obedient to your will. We are your sons if we honor and reverence you according to your word. We seek your glory if we attempt nothing in which you should be dishonored. Lead in a life conformable to your blessed will. We shall provoke the very enemies of the truth to praise you. But contrary wise, you shall be evil spoken of. Grant therefore, we beseech thee, that our life may answer to our profession, and that the light of our good works may so shine before men that they see in our godly conversation, may glorify thee, our heavenly Father. Amen. The following is a prayer against the temptations of the devil the world, and the flesh. Albeit, O most mighty captain, most valiant warrior, and most triumphant Lord Christ Jesus, thou by thy death hast put down him that had lordship over death, that is to say, the devil, that thou mightest deliver them which through fear of death were all their lifetime in danger of bondage. And although you have spoiled rule and power and made a show of them openly, and triumphed over them in your own person, and by this means delivered us from the hands of our enemies, that we might serve you all the days of our life in such holiness and righteousness as are except before thee. Yet the devil for the old malice which he has borne against man from his first creation, for through envy of the devil death entered into the world, goes forth still to rage against us, and walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And if he were not restrained by thy godly power, he would surely swallow us up, so great is his tyranny, so mighty is his power. He prevailed against our first parents, yea, and that in the state of their innocency and immortality. He afterward attempted other and prevailed, whereof some, notwithstanding, were the chosen vessels of mercy. Here of getting a courage to himself, he feared not to assail thee with his subtle temptations. Oh, is it then to be thought that he will let us alone, so feeble, so weak, and ready every moment to be overthrown? Thou thyself calls him the prince of this world, and thy holy apostle names him that god of this world. Strong must needs he be, and of no small might, whom thy holy word so terms. Strong indeed in comparison of us, but weak and of no force, being compared with you, this prince, this god of this world, Dost thou suffer continually to war against thine elect and chosen people? As for the reprobate and wicked, he has them already in his court at commandment, not to destroy them, 
which he most of all wishes, but to exercise and try their faith, to prove their constancy, and in this their conflict to occasion them by hearty prayers to flee to your holy name, which is a strong tower and mighty fortress, for so many as repair to it, that they getting aid at thy hand may not only enter battle with this their great and immortal enemy, but also by the power of thy might overcome him and put him to flight. And thou hast given Satan this liberty to tempt, to exercise, prove, and try us. Whether we be constant in thy faith and word or not, so does he take thy proffer. And although you allow him thus to do for our great profit and singular commodity, for we know that all things work for the best to them that love God, even that we, of ourselves being weak, should have a glorious triumph and noble victory over him through the mighty puissance of thee, our grand captain. Yet hereof takes he an occasion to seek our destruction, and that he may bring this to pass. Besides the innumerable companies of hellish spirits, he takes to him two other, our most cruel enemies, a world in the flesh, the one with his vain pleasures, the other with her carnal lusts, so compass us round about, that if thy present help were not, we must needs perish. O oh, loving Lord and most gentle Saviour, thou seest our weakness, misery, and no strength. Thou knowest again the valiance, might, and power of our adversaries. Our strength is no more to be compared with their might than the strength of little David with the mighty power of great Goliath. Our spear, our sword, our shield will do nothing in this behalf. Notwithstanding, Lord, we do not despair, for although there be not so great strength in us, that we may be able to resist this great company that comes against us, yet have we this one refuge and succor, even to lift up our eyes unto thee, and to say, Our help comes from the Lord our God, which made heaven and earth. If God be on our side, who can be against us? The battle, O Lord God, is thine. Our faith, therefore, is that thou wilt give our enemies into our hands, you taught us to pray that we may not be led into temptation, and have promised us that you will not allow us to be tempted above our strength, but will in the midst of the temptation make a way for us to escape. Thou art faithful, fulfill therefore thy promise, and for as much as your good pleasure is that we shall manfully fight with these our enemies, for what is the life of man in this world but a continual warfare, and no man is crowned except we strive lawfully, we, with our very heart despairing of our own strength and courage, most humbly beseech you to be our captain, and valiantly to defend us against our enemies, that they may not prevail against us. Make us strong in thee, O Lord, and in the power of thy might. Put on thy holy armor upon us, that we may stand steadfast against the crafty assaults of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against rule, against power, and against worldly rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness and heavenly things. For this cause, O most sweet Savior, put upon us thy holy armor, that we may be able to resist in the evil day and stand perfect in all things. Give us grace, therefore, to stand and to gird our loins about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness and our shoes prepared by the gospel of peace. But above all, grant that we may take unto us the shield of faith, in which we may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the evil one, and put on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is your blessed word. Grant also that we, being thus godly and armed, may through thy puissance, might, and strength, not only enter battle with our enemies, but also valiantly fight with them, courageously put them to flight, and triumphantly carry a glorious victory over them. So shall it come to pass that we, being valiant conquerors, through your help, shall receive at your hand, according to your promise, manna to eat that is hid in a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knows, saving he that receives it. Lord, for thy mercy's sake, grant us these our petitions. So shall we praise and magnify your blessed name for ever and ever. Amen.